Hey team, this is Austin here, product designer here at GitLab. I want to cover a couple ideas that I was bouncing around in terms of showing how we're thinking about the inheritance of merge request approvals across instances, groups, down to projects. Um, I was kind of hanging my head against the wall on this one, so I thought it'd be easiest to just show what I was thinking. So with that, this first example that I'm gonna walk through kind of ignores the state as it is today um, in terms of applying compliance framework labels. But the basic relationship would be projects are inheriting rules from their parent, which is a group or an instance. A group is inheriting its rules from an instance. So in this scenario, I have an instance where I have approval rules configured, a group, where there are also default approval rules and a project that is its child. Um, over here, there is a child project of this instance. So we're gonna change this instance to two. And what we would expect to happen is to have it trickle down. So what we saw is each of these child items, so the group, projects, projects all changed to two. Now, if we change this group to four, its child would also be impacted. So it would change from two to four. Now, in this case, if we disable the ability to change this value, this project can no longer increase or decrease that number. It's stuck at four, so the group does. Now, our things that would be interesting is if we disabled the changes at the very top, so at the instance level, this would set everything to two and lock down this ability to change the setting. Now, if we re-enable it, it would allow its children to go back to what their previous settings were. So the group is back to four. It doesn't allow changes, so this project is still locked down. But this project is back to two. So that's where the idea of it ends in terms of if there weren't any compliance labels. Where we could further refine this idea and potentially allow compliance labels to drive further customization. Same type of scenario, except I'm introducing um, an additional sub project to this group. So we have two projects that are the children of this group. If we change this to two, um, it's gonna only impact a few things because we are specifying at the instance that we only, we only want this stuff to apply to SOX related things. Now it's gonna impact groups, but it may not impact the group's children. We'll show how this plays out. All right, so changing it to two. The group is inheriting the two, but the project is not, and neither is this project. Uh, the reason being is the group is inheriting the instance rules, but it's not necessarily applying them all the way down. It's only applying that rule down to the ones that configure with the same label here. So essentially what we're saying is SOX is configured at the top as of what we care about, um, so the group it's not gonna be able to modify or change or go to a different label. It can't change it to like, let's say SOC2 or HIPAA, they're stuck kind of configuring it for SOX. So creating sensible sen defaults for SOX. If we change this to four, you'll notice that uh, the project has changed because it's matched to its group. Um, it has deviated from the instance, but because instance says it allow changes, that's acceptable. It's allowing the groups to decide for the projects that have a SOX label, how it would show up. Now, if we disable this feature, it's gonna lock down the number of approvals required for this project. Notice it still has not impacted this project and definitely not this project. Going back to our example from before, if we disable it at the instance, it's not gonna put all those things back to two. So the group, is back down to two, can no longer be changed. The project is locked down, no longer able to be changed. And these projects can still operate freely. So that provides a little bit more customization. I just really wasn't sure which one we settled on. So I'm interested to hear your thoughts. I could really use some help putting it into a diagram, um, maybe something that would make more sense to a developer or maybe like an architect, but I just work better with visuals. So it was helpful for me to kind of write it out first then put it into the UI and then kind of show how that would manifest.